Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Thorpe. Good morning. I'm I'm Maggie. I'm here with the Gold Cup Herald doing a historical feature piece. I read that paper every day. Wonderful. May I? Yes, please. Mr. Thorpe, I've researched and found that you are the oldest Gold Cup resident. From when? When? Yeah, when. Okay. How about we say it was somewhere between the end of the Spanish-American War and World War II. Deal. I'll put that in the story. You know how the readers love humor. Yes, they do. Now, could you tell me a little bit more about your time growing up in Gold Cup? Like, let's talk about how Gold Cup got its name. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I was a little tyke at the time, but I loved listening to the old folks tell stories about themselves growing up here and the stories they were told by their parents. Uh, You see, that's how history would remember back then. And it went like this. A gold prospector, mm, his uh, name forgotten over the years, had a large collection of gold nuggets. He decided he would make his wife a special wedding present. It would be like a chalice, but a gold cup made from those gold nuggets that he had. And the day of the wedding, his his wife and the bridesmaid were a little late, and they were running down the trail to get get to the church. And when they started to cross Devil's Creek, his, his, the bride to be slipped and, and and fell in. And and they say that she, the bridesmaid grabbed for her hand, and but she slipped and fell into that rushing water and just disappeared, never seen again, never found a body. That's tragic. That the, the strong murder just threw the cup into the rushing water, and it, too, was never seen again. He left Gold Cup and never returned. That's a really horrible story. Yes, it is. Gold Cup was a wild place back then. Well, speaking of really tough, do you have anything you could tell me about the serial killer? Ah, uh, yeah. First of all, he, he was originally from Silverton, but he was in Gold Cup uh, area when he kidnapped Mary Ferguson. How did they catch him? Well, you see, <laughs> that's the real story. The um, sheriff, Olga Little, who was the first female sheriff in Rocky Mountain, she formed a posse and tracked Philip down, and, and they found him at this, this old cabin up there on, on the Grand Mesa. And uh, during the gunfight, one of the posse got killed, and, and Philip got shot, but he got away. But they saved Mary. So... Was he ever actually caught? Well, eventually. Uh, that's, uh, that's the next story, and I'm getting kind of tired. Time for my nap. Uh, if you'd like, you can come back tomorrow. Thank you so much, Mr. Thorpe. You're welcome, dear. Well, for Gold Cup City, it, it all started when U.S. Marshal named Gillingham arrived in Gold Cup. Yeah, he was escorting his prisoner, a serial killer named Philip, to the mining town of Silverton, uh, where he would be hanged for murdering a young girl. Arriving on the same train uh, was the new town doctor, uh, William Ludlow. Sheriff sent me to help escort our prisoner to our little jail here. I don't need any help, but you can lead the way. Sure thing. So who's the new sheriff? Sheriff Little. Is that any relation to Olga? <laughs> well, 
Matter of fact. Oh, God. What in the hell is this all about? How in tarnation did you become the sheriff? Well, he got tired of running those mules in those mountains. And this job came open. All I had to do was whoop a couple other guys. I'll shoot them. I'll ride them. Here I am. So put your eyes back in your socks. Tell me about this killer you brought to town. Well, he's only gonna be in your care. So I can give him up to Silverton to be up. Just like that? No trial? Just like that. You hungry? I could eat a bear. That is hungry. This fine evening. Couldn't be better. You all know Marshall Gillingham? Yeah. Don't you retire by now? What do you mean by that? Well, I'm, I'm just saying that you might be out enjoying some relaxation and fishing. We might be here, I'll be sure to let you know. Join us for some poker? Maybe after dinner. Good evening, Sheriff. And may I ask, who is this handsome gentleman with you? Marsha Gillingham. Meet our shy waitress. And... Waitress. Two beers, two steaks. Tell Tom to make me good. Tom ran off with that new young gal. Said he needed a little vacation. Who's cooking? Joseph, the blacksmith. Only one barrier to him. Well, tell him I want my steak rare, no shoes. So back in for me. <laughs> Good hey Doc, you want me to deal you in? Who are you playing? Poker. So thank you. It's just for fun. You mingle a hand. How long till Silverton? I've got a mule skinner friend coming from there. Says there's still some big slides on the pass. Yeah, I've been over them passes many a time. I think we'll be all right. Well, I could go with you. But what, you don't think I can handle it? No, no. I'm just offering some company. I told Joseph to cook up these steaks extra special for you, or you'll have to hear it from me. And I would like to buy you an after-dinner drink. Well, thank you, Annie, but I'll have to pass on that. I'm leaving early in the morning. Well, there will be one way to me to give you a bit. Looks like you got yourself a pair of more. She does get right to the point. I like a straw. Uh, you win again, Doc. Thought you never played this game before. Must be my lucky night. Well, I gotta be getting home for my wife feeds my supper to the dog. She do that? Oh, well, not really. I'm just kidding. But uh, if I come home late again one more night, she's gonna raise holy hell. So, good night, gents. Some nickels or win some of yours. You, Marshall? I think I'll just watch for a bit. So, Marshall, what will happen to your prisoner once you get him back to Silverton? From barrel hanging. No trial? But he's already been found guilty by absenteeism. Absenteeism? Yep, they can do that. I'm highly curious about his background. Do you know anything about it? No. The sheriff up in Silverton's a friend of mine, and he said that the boy started to get into a lot of trouble when his ma passed. What kind of trouble? Just young buck trouble. Drinking, fighting in the saloons. Till one of the girls jolted him. They found her body out back. 
He just disappeared. Did they catch up with it? No, he vanished. That killed six women in Kansas City. Well, the killings were almost identical. Belly gutted, found in a graveyard, and dressed in a wedding gown. How did they know he was responsible for the other murders? Well, he was caught red-handed with a dead girl. Two patrolmen saw a plant light coming from the cemetery. Went in and found him with the body. And he bolted and got shot in the leg. Hmm. Pathological. What's that, Doc? There's a doctor, a, a Austrian psychologist named Freud. He has some interesting theories about why people commit murder. So what kind of theories? They have to do with the unconscious mind and repression. Does, does he have any relatives over in Silverton? Um, uh, no. His mom died the year before he killed that girl. I wish she was still alive. I'd do anything to go over there and talk to her. Sure, caught up in this Freud mumbo jumbo. I don't consider it mumbo jumbo. Anything that has to do with understanding the mind fascinates me to no end. You study people's brains? Not their brains exactly. How the mind works. Who is this Freud person? He's a doctor from Vienna. He found that psychoanalyzing these patients always referred to some definite problem or conflict usually from early childhood. I can't remember anything from my childhood. Before age seven, that's what I remember getting a wet body. <laughs> that's typical. People usually repress their negative memories. Back. Yeah, I'm stumped with all this palaver. Let's play cards. I'll start with the next. Let's try a three dumb and call with nine and eight. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hey, Marshall. Olga, what is he? Calm down. Who died? Doc, what's your Freud book say about crazy people and them having superhuman strength? Well, I remember when old man Jessup went crazy in the street and started chasing everybody with a pitchfork, and the young deputy came up, grabbed him on the shoulder, and he throwed him off like a rag doll. Yes, that's true. Some people, when they snap, can get uh, superhuman strength. I'm worried about the marshal. He's almost 60. So what are you going to do? I'm going to ride with him to Silverton. No, I'm going with you. Can you ride? Since I was eight years old. Western saddle? Only kind I've ever known. Me too. Well, hell, count me in. Mary, you're gonna wear out that dress before your wedding. be a boy or girl? What boy or girl? Our first baby. Do you think it'll be a boy or girl? They're not even married yet, and only the Lord knows that. I hope it's a girl, so I can name it after you. <laughs> You want some coffee? <laughs> oh, probably not. How about some of this? I've been saving this for a special occasion. I think this is it. It's not often that a man gets married and his wife has a legitimate baby. What did you say? You think it's going to be a boy or a girl? <laughs> oh, 
What now, Sheriff? You going around back. Make some noise. Try to attract his attention. Got you. Yeah, I think it was okay. 